clockwork, so we pretty much know what their heroes are going to be. Some options for lanes, but the, the standard one would just be the clockwork off lane, either Razor and Naga mid, and the others in the tri lane. There are better options than Razor here, but Power Rangers actually banned Pugna very quickly, so that Alliance had a pick really quickly, and they were pretty close to ending their reserve time. So I don't think this is the ideal pick for them, and I don't think that they think that it's the ideal pick for them, but it's a safe pick. You can't really go wrong Ten with it. A lot of uh, the unstable current really good versus Skyrath and Ogre, not strength-based, so 10% not terribly effective versus him, although 10 is still pretty good versus him, and his static link isn't that great versus Blinkers, so there's a lot of deficiencies uh, with the hero. But on the flip side, uh, very good AoE. Um, as I said, unstable current pretty useful. Uh, minus armor on already low armor heroes like Skyrath is very useful, and good laning phase, good mech carrier, which they didn't have before. And I think, like you said, more than anything, it's just a, a solid, safe pick. Which has generally been Alliance's go-to as of late. Just trying not to lose the landing stage too hard and and look for superior like team decision-making to carry it. They go for a Viper for PR, so they get more strong laning, something that can go reasonably well versus Razor. Doesn't match up that great against Naga, generally. But just a, a mech builder for them. Timbersaw's not going to be building that. AM's going to be busy with his... Well, I mean, there's two ways to go. Do we see that, that Crimson Guard Manta no. aggression? Or do not we this see game. The, the Battle Fury not versus card carry? Naga Siren. Versus Naga Siren, you have to either win early or have a better late game winner than her. Or outsplit push her, which is very rare. Um, they don't have a good pushing lineup, so just get a Battle Fury far and faster. Anything is actually to uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with her in a late game. Uh, kills Illusions very quickly, doesn't take that much damage from Illusions uh, because Riptide and Radiance are generally your sources of damage and he has a lot of minus uh, or minus magic damage. He also <laughs> just farms extraordinarily quickly with Battle Fury plus Blink and can actually compete with her levels of gold per minute. Yeah, we'll see if, we'll see if that's the build. And for now, we'll introduce the lineups. We've got Ditya Ra playing the anti-mage, heading to the the safe lane. Sonika standing in on the Scarth Mage played a great Abaddon in their previous win against Cloud9. I, I feel like he was the most important player on their team there. J4, the Ogre Magi, that put Shechlo onto the solo mid Viper, and Cheshire Cat is the Timbersaw. Mm, Loda will get aggressive here. They actually back off for a second. Sonika gets caught out by an initial net, and then his damage is drained, but their supports are damn slow for Alliance. They won't actually be able to get a kill. But they do get aggressive. So yeah, running through the Alliance heroes quickly. You've got Loda on the Naga Siren, 8 Mother, the Razor, Ake, the Lion, Misery, the Rubik. A big playmaker hero for him. And at least Bulldog on one of his more comfort heroes, the Offlane Clock. Uh, just want to mention quickly, p neither of these teams have done that great in the Summit 2 so far. Alliance is 0-1, and one, very small sample size, but off to a losing record. And PR, despite their win earlier, 2-3. Uh, and three. Skyrath already skilling Ancient Seal. It's pr very abnormal to see a level one. Hmm. Maybe he thought that no, it was going to save him from first flood, but he didn't actually need to skill anything. Yeah, like if Lion yeah. runs in first stun, but they couldn't get in range. Will hurt his ability to harass this clockwork quite a bit. Like Ancient Seal into, into nothing, basically. That's unfortunate. Well, let's see where we go from here. Okay, picks up an invis off the bat. Radiant didn't get a ward down for this. I don't think they had any vision. And they will go in mid. It's actually a mid timber saw. You're going to send three heroes rotating through. Misery coming in. This could be bad. Net to start. Impale to follow. Cheshire Cat didn't even skill the reactive armor. Oh, he's in trouble now. Whirling death. Not going to save him. Oh, maybe it will. No. <laughs> oh, end up falling. Normally, timber saw. Not an easy level one kill, especially for heroes like Lion and Rubik. They lack damage, but... Already having skilled Whirling death. Not expecting any aggression from Rubik Lion. He... He pays. And good news, though, Sonico may snipe the courier. I don't think he would have, uh... Oh, yeah. Is Sonico gonna get it? I don't know. Uh, maybe on the way back. They know Loda's gonna have a very fast something, which is a bottle. And this should be sniped. I mean, it's, it's headed towards the top side. Oh. One more auto attack. Oh, he's... Oh, he got it! Oh, that Scarab made base movement speed. Making the difference. At least for Loda, his, his bottle wasn't on the courier. He has net skilled up, though. If he gets off the net... This is going to be trouble. The silence from Sonico just a bit too slow. Riptide is used. Only two auto attacks to get this. Maybe three. Not going to happen. So a nice turn there. Oh, well, snipe the courier. It's about as good as it gets for giving up first blood. 
Yeah, and unfortunately he didn't get it before the bottle was delivered, but still, that's a very nice boost. Even if he had a level 1 reactive armor, I don't think it would have saved him, because Whirling Death still reduces damage taken by reducing your stat and base damage, so it would have still been that's fairly true. close. Well, either way, Cheshire can't, despite that death, it's still a pretty good matchup for Timber. So Naga's illusions just tickle him. He can clear them out almost instantly with his mass AoE. Good hero to secure runes, and Naga doesn't really have the burst to bring him down. So he should still do well in this lane, despite giving up that kill. Yeah. It's more that Lodo will have an easier time than anything else. So we see Anti-Mage going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bulldog. Burns away all his mana. Ditiara will blink away after that and be okay. A very unusual 2-1-0 build. You see two mana break in some matchups, but versus Clockwork, I don't really think it's that imperative the, because he doesn't have that much mana. The main time when I see this lately is when players are going the Crimson Guard build because then you need the damage uh, and you're not as reliant on the early points and stats because you already get a bunch of HP. So I'm not, it's not a guaranteed tell. It could just be two points, but... That's true, but I'm wondering I'm, if that's his choice. He can't play aggressively into the line. He can't blink into a Razor. He can't blink into a Lion. Naga also with a net will lock him down. Or Clockwork. There's so many spells that I think he should just play traditional farming into mage and not deviate from that build. Yeah, and they don't have that much lockdown. So like they, they, well, they do have lockdown, but they need to farm to really bring it into play. Ake won't have a blink for a long time. Misery can steal blink, but they have to get in range for their follow-up. As we see blows traded in the stat lane. How do you- oh, hold that thought. Eight Mother caught up by the soul. They lift up the Razor- or, sorry, the Viper. Toss him back down to save the Razor, who will drop extremely low to this aggression. Tri-lane of Lion Rubik against an Ogre Scar. They are just getting punished early on, but not dying, which was good. I'm surprised he doesn't have one point in Unstable Current. To, so Ogre has two single target spells, at least early, as well as uh, Skywrath. So it's yeah. pretty useful in this lane. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he doesn't get it by level four at the very least. And he did not pick it up at level four. Hmm. What do you? How do you? How do you feel about this tri lane? Like on paper, to me, it looks pretty damn good for PR. Their their supports are just stronger in lane. But is this worth the trade off of giving Bulldog an easier time Double bottom? Do you, are you happy with the lanes here for PR? Fine. I think it's fine. Uh, all the as long as Timbersaw doesn't die. I mean, he died at level one, so it's not a big deal. Um, but, but he's still crushing. I, I mean, as yeah. you would expect for this matchup. So I think it's good. They're putting pressure on all three lanes, and still the bigger issue is they haven't really shut down the Naga, and them having uh, supports like that isn't really going to allow them to shut him down because the Viper can't really um, solo these three heroes. Yeah, if they go for a smoke, Shade Shell, well, he does have phase boots. Like, if he sees them coming, he can just run away, but that's tough. Sharkat now hits level 6. This is... Where Loda has to be careful. He's only level 5, doesn't have his ultimate yet. And... Dyer's he will back way off to get his deep. bottle. He does not want the stall again. He's gonna start stacking the woods on the way back. As PR retreat off the top lane. So, yeah, Loda being efficient on his movements here. Oh, uh -huh. let's see... Is he, yeah, he should get... 8 Mother. Being on top lane to go into 8 Mother. He takes a lot of damage from the Ogre, but he's still stealing a decent amount back the other way. Shade Soul doesn't care, just... T tanks it anyway, as J4 gets aggressive, that ogre just so oh. damn strong, going ham with the stuns, well, you know? and a two for nil exchange. Eight hey, mother, I mean, with unstable current maybe he can survive that, but he was just playing way too aggressively, trying to get uh, maximum damage out of static link before having to retreat. You just cannot take this ogre Skyrath mage tri -lane early on with a Rubik lion. I don't know what else they can do, should they be roaming, stacking, or... Just dodging fights, I guess, is, is the ideal way to do it. For Alliance? Yeah, yeah. They're getting wrecked. Even before that engagement, every time they, they post up, they nearly die. They can't really kill Timber in mid now. He's very tanky and does a lot of damage. Uh, probably just stacking the pool and deny farm through securing their uh, pool. We'll be able to check for the six minute rune here as Soniko gonna duke it out with the Naga Illusion. Will Loda get that deny? No. Invis picked up for Soniko, but it was spotted by the Dyer if they were watching closely. Meanwhile, Loda gonna bottle up the Dyer rune. So they plant a little trap here. No detection in sight. Misery gonna retreat out. And they do bring the Ogre down bottom. They'll look for Bulldog. They have a Mana Void ready to go. He's close to being dead. I think with the Mana Void they have it. Maybe need one more auto attack there. Use the Mana Void now. No blink for a few seconds, but. But Ogre also has no cog, so they can confidently dive this tower. Ogre securing the kill, punches it home. <laughs> Brushing off this tower. I, I love this hero, man. Everything about him, the, the art design, the, the play style. 
Ogre Dota, best Dota. And going with the 2-2-2-2-0. Two, 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 no Bloodlust. Hmm. Yeah, th this is what I mean. Like, I've seen every single possible build on this hero. Just maxing those two skills, getting the value point in Bloodlust, have maxing Bloodlust. Have you seen bloodlust. stats Bloodlust? No, okay, that, that build I have not seen. <laughs> <laughs> the stats lust build. The pure right-click deep soger. It's like the it's like Lone Drill when you skip the bear. It just ain't it ain't gonna cut it, man. But it is it is clowny for pubs, I suppose. So misery will rotate towards mid now. They've Loda for the most part has done a good job of stacking up his neutrals. They're gonna give the Rubik the mid lane. They want him to hit six. Some good spells to steal this game. Chakram, always nice. Blink is great. It's a good game for Rubik to get his early levels, but PR may not allow this. Ah, uh, they don't even care about misery. They say whatever. Get your level six if you so dare. We're going top. Strike a path for Ake, or maybe even for Ape Mother. Although Ake's in position to reveal this, he's probably dead. He gets silenced, then he gets fire blasted, then he gets clubbed. Clubs of death. Yeah, this Viper pick was actually really good for PR. It's extremely difficult for them to go on him. Um, and yeah, once they got him that good start, and since then he's been like just left alone more or less. Yeah, he has an easier time CSing uh, than Razor. He has higher damage as well as Nether Toxin. Uh, on top of that, and a lot of magic resistance too. And Alliance doesn't have that much physical damage aside from uh, Razor. And Razor's been shut down pretty hard. Yeah, and good, even the Naga's slipping a bit. And it's to be expected just because the Timber Saw does so well against these illusions and just in general in a 1v1 versus a melee hero. Anti Mage, let's see, what is he going to go for? He's sitting on, he's completed his treads. This is that time where he's got to tell. Probably the Battle Fury. But you never know. He has... Okay, he has gone back for Blink. Alright, so most likely Battle Fury then. Maxing the Blink first. Yeah, I don't think Crimson Guard is very good here. It's Plus, very specific. Yeah, and it's it's not like PR should be too afraid of taking yeah. this late. Anti-Mage is pretty good there. Timbersaw, Rex Illusions, even if the main Naga is difficult to deal with. They have Bloodlust too. Yeah, that's that's very true. A split push will be strong. The only area where I worry for PR a bit is, is just team fight. They only have one real stun. Well, Alliance is worse, if anything. Yeah, Dyer's they have a little more lockdown. That's about deck. it. But they also have less AoE damage. PR has a lot more AoE damage. Uh, that's true. The timber is just... Yeah, both teams are pretty ass at team fighting, to be honest. <laughs> yes. Ogre's gonna wrap around. Or, uh, sorry, Timber's gonna wrap around. He'll be joined Eight. by the Ogre momentarily. They go on Ape Mother, they use the Viper Strike. And the backstab won't even be needed to start. Cheshire Cat now gonna tank the tower. He also doesn't care. This is a team of bruisers. And they'll jump on Ake, Timber Chain through. Kill secured. Hold on, rotates, but he's gotta find someone squishy to jump on. So Nico into the tree line. Protected by the beefy front line of hook Cheshire shot. Cat and J4. Missed. Can't find that opening. I don't believe I missed this hookshot post flare. Even if he hits that. That yeah. might just backfire. Still gets a kill, though. They need to get some kills on the board. And oh. that would have uh, given Misery his level 6. It also gives Ditya Rod just a completely empty lane bottom lane. Not shaping up well for Alliance at all. They need level 6 in their supports ASAP so they can just blow people up with Finger of Death. But at this rate, PR is just walking all over this Razor and making him irrelevant. We talked about him being a mech carrier, but... And they probably late. lost Ake Bottom. Fire Blast comes out. Anti-Mage gonna tank the tower. Bit Ogre, not even really... Well, not gonna get the kill the end. The Anti-Mage Mon avoids that. Screw Magic. Yeah, fuck Magic indeed. These two supports are playing way better than they did in the game versus Cloud9, though, on the side of PR. These are It's a great support game as well. Running these two aggressive supports against... A fairly weak laning phase for Alliance. They have they've taken advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Nicely done by PR. The, the mighty Morph and Power Rangers are starting to upgrade here. Yeah, I think I would have liked, liked to see Alliance head. switch from the Naga uh, carry to the support Naga, but what would you have gone for instead? Just a more a, a more aggressive strategy okay. in general. Just because they they lost the early game and like a Slark type hero, yeah, something yeah. like that. Anything like that. Well, Sark doesn't provide enough lockdown, but um, just anything more to try and... They only have one way back in the game right now, and that's a farmed Nogla Siren. 
Like, maybe they can take fights, but, like, Razor still has to play very, very carefully, try and survive, and he's just very likely to die in all these fights. So, what are, is their game plan post-30? Get their Radiance. Well, this ain't the game plan. Misery trapped out in the river by a Fire Blast. Then the Silence on the Bulldog, well played by Suniko. So Bulldog can't even cock. He will finally suck the Skyrath Mage back into them, but now he's going to most likely pay with his life. Can he TP out of time? It'll be close, not close enough. Cheshire Cat secures that kill, and bottom lane in a... Again goes the anti-mage. Fearless of this lion. He will blink out. Uh-oh. Well, shot. Sorry, blinks in. Thought he was going to retreat. He monovoids Ake. And doesn't quite get the kill. Now they're rotating the Rubik. Only level 5. Fade Bolt won't be nearly enough to score this one. Oh, he doesn't get the kill, but he... He punishes the lion once again. Let's check Lotus for He's been a little quiet. 3,500 gold on him. So, I guess Radiance maybe 16 minutes. It's not so bad. He's caught up pretty nicely considering that he had a rougher lane. Uh, oh man, they blocked the spawns though. Uh oh, that's that's troublesome. Yeah, and he doesn't, he can't really go farm the enemy woods yet. He doesn't have the radiance, so he's not going to clear any camps. He can't sit in the lane versus Viper. Can't lane versus Timbersaw. Well, I mean, he can barely lane versus Timbersaw. And they've been rotating supports in left and right for Power Rangers to kill whoever dares suck up, soak up experience on the bottom lane. Okay, and Misery looking for the jump in. Man, the gem. This is the, power is under attack. This is the play. Hmm. Naga oh, Siren. Just, oh, just to deward the camps, I guess. That's expensive, but needed. Because if they just reward them again, Dyer's you don't want to be blowing too many sentries on that. Yeah. Very risky play, though. It's a smart play. Most teams would not do this, but no, it's just all get Naga Siren huge. Loda. And Loda we trust. Yeah, well, Loda's going to have his work cut out for him. Shake Show's going back for a Midas here on the Viper. And on top of that, the Timber Saw has been free farming. So you've got a full tri core for PR, all doing very well. They're three out of the top four. Their cores are only like. Well, in fact, they're about to also pass Loda at the rate he's going. He will pretty much be 1v5ing. Bulldog, this is, this is not going to help. Caught out mid lane by the Ogre Stun, then Skyrath may jolted into oblivion. Another quick, clean kill. And a tower to boot. Just keep on piling on the victories for PR in this game. 8,000 gold lead, 6,000 experience lead, great late game. Winning the laning stage, free farming the anti-mage, Battle Fury online at 14 minutes. Even before the Naga completes the ratings and with treads. And with, uh... What more can go right? <laughs> Viper to back up carry, too. Well, I guess I could start playing their theme song in the middle of the broadcast. That might, that might pump them up a little bit, but short of that, I don't think you can ask for anything else. Bloodstone soon on Old Timber. Hmm. He's a really nice hero to have against Naga, too. I'm, hey. I'm liking the Timber picks in general. I feel like that hero was a bit undervalued in the previous patch. And also he just fits in nicely now, where you can get away with slightly greedier drafts than than what you could before when towers drop so quickly. Oh, he got a couple buffs too with items, Ags, and uh, Bloodstone. One of the most popular Bloodstone carriers in the game. Yeah, Sol Rain is really nice as the build-up item. We'll look for the jump in mid here, perhaps. Two heroes. Creeping on the high ground, Bulldog tining out with his bud. Razor might have to go for a BKB rush instead of a mech this game. He's just that far behind. Do want to point out that Misery managed to steal Blink, but hasn't been able to do anything with it on the Rubik. And it does go back to your initial concern. Like, picking Razor didn't really solve their problems with not having much damage. They still have very little. Finger of Death still not ready for Ake. There's nowhere for him to go farm. Or, so, or leaving Leech experience. Really. PR not really taking that many towers, but once they get this mid tower, the jungle is gonna really close off for Loda. Still, should have his radiance fairly soon, about 900 gold away, farming away in his own jungle. Well, smoke now from PR. J4, I'm grouping up with Diddy Ra. Sonico here as well. And they're gonna wrap around. Misery's gotta be careful. He's got the stolen blink. It'll be revealed. Is he quick enough? No. Ogre too fast on the draw. He might look like a dumb oaf, but. He's got that quick pull out when he needs it. Scores a kill there on the Rubik. Doesn't lead to a tower, and then he dewards to boot. This is a very smart ogre. <laughs> <laughs> the fabled intelligent ogre. So who do, they, seen. who do they really go on with Clockwork? You can't go on Anti-Mage, you'll blink away. You can't really go on Viper since he's...
pretty tanky with max corrosive skin. You can't go on Timber Salt since he'll Timber Chain away. And if you even if you do catch any of these heroes, you'll just get a Skyrath all dumped on you, Loda. Wow. He's songs, but that Chakram nearly finishes him off. Misery will come in as Loda's sticking around. They're going to need to bring in more than this, and they will. Bulldog here, Timber Chain out. Not going to happen. Cheshire Cat, this would be a big kill if he drops. And if he will, push back in by the Cogs. They toss the salt if you stolen Timber Chain. Level 4. That's a nice pickup for the Rubik. If he doesn't get silenced. <laughs> and Naga Siren. Or stunned, and they actually have a, and they have a lot of stuns. Is he going to sell his Quelling Blade to get it, or his TP scroll to get his Radiance? Actually, not a lot. He needs it right now. Yeah. Just just the Ogre. Just the Ogre stun on the silence. But that's probably enough. And Monovoid, I suppose. Anti-Mage now. What's he got? Yasho already picked up. He's going to pull ahead now. Two and a half K gold up on Loda. The Quelling Blade is out. He's not selling it, though. It's a nice item to have on an illusion-based hero, but most of your damage does come from the Riptide and Radiance at this point. So you would think just getting it ASAP is the goal. Going for a pipe instead of a mech, that's fairly interesting from Shachlo. It's not a bad choice either. I think pipe has been highly underutilized in the summit too. We haven't seen it at all. That Zeus game would have been a great pipe game as well. Zeus. Uh, what else was there? Slark. Skyra. Couple of other things. People don't believe in the pipe, man. I remember even when I was casting with Winter a lot, like, in 2012. He's like, build a pipe. Build a pipe. This team needs a pipe. No one ever did it. And they often paid for it. Yeah, I think the Chinese teams are much better about doing so. Well, Naga Sun with Radiance. Hopefully this is where they can start mining the comeback. But they are in on the Ditya Ram, but then what? Then Ake just died. He got multi-cast him. Hello, mister. Goodbye. And they lost a jam, too. Do they see it? Oh, they do. I think they do. They were busy killing off the Razor. I'm wondering if they're going back for this. Yeah, they'll get the gem as well. So that's a three hero smackdown in the bottom lane. Can't they just go high ground right now? I think so. Well, if they had a mech, they have maybe? The pipe. They have the pipe now. Oh, they have earned. They have earned charges and pipe. They could go high ground. I suppose safe place just to take the tier twos, maybe Roche. But there's really nothing Alliance can do unless they grossly overextend. Even the Solemn Siren still cooling down for 45. It's just. It it's just feels so strange to see Alliance get absolutely Dyer's crushed by this. Somehow my head's still caught in those TI3 fallen. times, you know? It's a different roster, it's a different patch. But they are just not the dominant bunch they once used to be. They're not. And just having to rely on 4 Protect 1 every single game is not a winning recipe for... They, ju they do feel like one of the more predictable teams right now. Cloud9 we saw trying to experiment, it didn't work, but Radiance I still think that's the right approach. Attack. You gotta have multiple styles of play at the at this level. Nowadays teams are just too good at countering if you have, if you have one. They'll jump it on Shade mid lane, he doesn't go pipe though, can they pop it off in time? He didn't get it off, the finger of death is there, and it'll actually fall from full HP to none, but it comes at the cost of probably three heroes. Cheshire Cat, Misery all in trouble, he's stolen, a Viper Strike, not gonna save him, kill secured by the... The anti-magus, as he once again gives the middle finger to magic users everywhere. A 3 for 1 trade, a 15k gold lead, and the hits just keep on coming for the Power Rangers. Another tower to fall soon, and... I mean, it's just a matter of time before Naga Siren is actually going to be forced to fight, and she is far too weak to do so at this point. Far too weak. And these illusions, anti mage is probably one of the better heroes if he's ahead to just deal with that. He's so mobile, he can he can find the illusions cutting the creep wave and, and deal with them much easier than most. They will steal a shock rum again. But gem now, along with the bloodstone out on Cheshire Cat, map control will be going the way of PR. And they if they wanted to, could just start warding off camps again. But I don't even think they care about that, Ben. It looks like they just want to die. Why? Why they want to fight alliance this far ahead. <laughs> Lines being drawn, they actually have a good sense for where Alliance are. You can see Cheshire Cat saying they're probably up near their secret shop, and they were just north of it. Won't go in, though. They have that ward there. And they're just going to split push. Ditya Ra pushing in the top lane. We see the bottom lane handled by Cheshire Cat. It's a nice chokehold the PR have Alliance bottled up into. Power is under attack. Look at these, like these supports. 1,500 net worth on your friggin' Rubik, 2,000 on the Lion. It's basically a 5v3 at that point. 
They just need to get a Heart or Butterfly on Anti-Mage, get a Mech on Viper, take down the T2s, do Roshan, and then probably push uphill before uh, Naga gets her third or fourth item. Yeah, and Loda only has the BFTs now. So maximizes his mobility here, his split push potential, but still doesn't clear the waves that quickly. Or at least doesn't threaten towers with the with no Yasha, with no Manta completed. And they have warded off those camps. The other concern is with no Manta, he can be ganked, so he's got to play this very safely. And, and we see Loda's doing that. And yeah, Sentry wards down, and both camps near the mid. Those are the safe camps, too. Those are the ones near the lane that he could potentially access. A load of a solid 4k gold down and changes. The jump in onto Ake is attempted. They get aggressive. I love seeing the Ogre and Timur just join forces. Such a scary duo for these squishy supports. Timbers all look so intimidating with Bloodlust. <laughs> Especially just seeing him like Radiance gyrating the, the, the portrait. But he's like bloody red in the game. He looks crazy. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you gotta be a little crazy to hate trees as much as he does. Mother Nature cries out in pain. Speaking of Father Nature, what happened to Nature's Prophet? I haven't seen that hero at all lately. Not even from a line. Are they actually trying to hold this? They should just delay with uh, Plasma Field plus Fade Bolt. There's no reason for them to take a fight here. Loda is trying. He's pulling out every trick in the book though, Ben. Hiding in the trees top lane, sending illusions towards his jungle. If some camps are blocked, he goes to farm the others, but he's 65 CS down on the anti-mage. It's like they basically have a hero who's equally good at split push, or close to it anyway. And they're also, all their other heroes are relevant. <laughs> he's so good. 1v5 big. is, I think, pretty accurate. Anti-mage is massive. <laughs> he's going to get bigger, too. He's got Manta out, 3.3k gold. If they want, get the Butterfly Heart, or, or Butterfly Abyssal BKB, something like that. Loda will probably still only have four or five items, and the rest of the team will be absolutely food. And the AM can just ignore Loda and go for the other heroes, if he so chooses. But we'll see if they even wait that long. Chaicho, J4, Sunika. like to see them push that advantage a little bit. There will be a smoke Please attempted towards the bottom lane. No, not a smoke, just a rotation. But that might cost them 8 Mother. Mid lane, really forced off, driven back from the tower. Stunned, but nicely timed by Misery. As 8 Mother still ends up going down to that Ogre Mad Dice. Damage over time. Pipe now used. Wasn't even needed earlier. They do steal the Chakram, though. Probably the best ability to slow down this push. PR, just keep on muscling up on the tower. Four staff on the J4. Now the Timber Saw coming in. He does get hexed. They can look to focus him down, and he's actually fairly squishy to magic damage. Will end up falling to a nice finger of death from Ake. Now J4 may be next. They've lost their gem as well. A two for one, but a gem also given up, and they may lose Suniko to boot. Song is available. Are they going to use it? Nope. I'll let him go. Well, that's the kind of turnaround Alliance have been praying for. But yeah. they still need a lot more. They need the anti-mage in these fights, too. Well, they pressure the T2s as long as Loda's there. If Loda's there, they need the anti-mage there. If he's not there, he's okay to split push. Yeah, Timbersaw's fat, but not that fat. Got yeah. blown up. Yeah. What do you go for here if you're just a, a BKB? Well, he should have gotten the pipe, and Viper should have gotten the mech. Or, yeah, Viper should have gotten the mech. Um, pipe would still be really good. Or, sorry, a casual cloak would be really good for him. Um, I think he needs HP, though. He doesn't really need physical mitigation. Although Shiva's is very good at clearing Naga illusions, that's not their problem. Hmm. Okay. So, BKB or Cloak, something like that. Scepter? Uh, maybe like a... Yeah, Cloak into an Ogre Club. And then decide whether or not you want Scepter or BKB. It's pretty good. Yeah, if he goes that route, there's very little to deal with his Timber Chains either. Uh, if he does go BKB. He could even go Vlad's for the anti-mage and he could just close the game out. It, he doesn't have to go an item just for himself. Um, they, they haven't really wanted to force it too much. I do wonder if they're being a little bit overly patient. Curry now at the secret shop. That's a heart recipe. Well, maybe this is what they're waiting for. Heart complete for the anti-mage. He's one full item up on Loda. Actually, an, an item and a half, I would say, since the BOTs don't really help you fight at all. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Just reaching his peak now. This is an anti-mage nearly on his prime. Just a butterfly and perhaps a BKB or Abyssal short of being fully in man mode. And he'll, he'll probably be pushing now with the team. 
We got an ogre bounty run. They'll rotate towards the bottom lane. And still PR. No huge pressure from them. Just slow, patient counterplay. Deep push top lane. Farm the enemy ancients. Try to starve out Alliance a bit, but they may end up losing an AM for this. Can they hook shot in to set up a kill on this anti mage? He's in the pit now. Support's not really with him. This could end poorly. Oh, no, they got eyes now on Loda. He's going to Song immediately. The hook shot in with Bulldog and try and force these other heroes back. But Song, and then what? Anti Mage is jumping in. He tries to Manta dodge and impale. Not able to do so. His damage will be drained. But he blinks to the left, retreats out successfully while Bulldog, trapped in an awkward position up on the tree line, has no hook shot out of here. That's a dog in the kennel for a long time. In fact, too long. But they'll go and find him anyway. They try, try to take his bone, they'll succeed. The Bulldog is officially out of the map, out of the game, and My thanks. this is a free Roche. Mega kill now for the Anti-Mage. I think he's yet to die. Yeah, 5-0-1. So they, can they maybe deny this with an illusion? Something along those lines? Doesn't even seem like they'll get that. Without Naga sleeve, it might be a good time to push high ground. It was a very good time to take Roche, so he had to use it to try and set up on the Anti-Mage that didn't even yield in a kill. Speak it up. Hey, and drops the poor man's shield and secures himself a nice Aegis. Do they, do they just push in? They should. This is the time to end it. Anti Mage is really strong relative to Naga Siren. And as the game goes on, um, I mean, Anti Mage will have less and less slots, and Naga Siren will have more annoying items to deal with for them. So it's a very good time to end it. 19 to 5, only 5 kills for Alliance in 28 minutes, 16,000 gold behind. They might not get a better opportunity than this. Yeah, uh, yeah, and just to echo your point, I mean, having two, three big items when your opponent has one or two, that's a huge advantage. But if you have like five when they have four, or six when they have five, it, the difference really isn't as noticeable. Right now, their relative strength is extremely high, and finish him will be the call for PR, or at least attempting to do it. Five heroes down mid, so Nico joining the crew. They have to be aggressive a little, like just straight walk up the hill with anti mage. He has heart, he has manta style, he has battle fury, he has an Aegis. He's bloodlust too. Yeah, you just walk up the hill. You Don't got be ogre. You got ogre backing you up. It's like having two heroes on your team. Two heads better than one. Tier three and under siege. Anti mage still holding that manta style for now. Not really even remotely nervous, although he does lose a decent amount of HP. His ogre will begin to roll the dice a bit, throwing out an ignite here or there. Alliance? Do they really want to leave their base? No, they just want to scare people. They're out of urge. They need a mech. They could have just mech'd up and just um, kept going. I don't really know why he can Or they just need to get hype right now. Which they do, but it's true. It's after a lot of damage was already taken. Diddy Roth, throw up in the air. Multicast from the Ogre. And then what? Then the tower will fall. That's the big prize claim. Still looking for that Alliance jump in. Impale on the Diddy Roth. And the work on the range racks. That's the easier rack to bring down. Okay, has a finger ready to go. It's only level one. And the Timbersaw gets aggressive, jumping onto Misery. A few slices from those blades. And once again, the ultimate magic user down for the count. Don't lose Loda before he can solve. He'll buy back immediately, but Ake's already dead. And it might just be too late. They'll try. They've used multiple buybacks. Triple, in fact. Anti Mage still has a freaking Aegis. He goes toe to toe. Die, magic users. Fall before the wrath of the AM as he blinks forward. Bulldog will take down the Viper Strike. No, barely survives. Anti Mage is leveling up. It's NBA jam time for him. He'll retreat out, finish, finish the Range Racks. He's hexed. Remember, this is only life number one. And they've already used three buybacks just to try and bring him down halfway. Eight Mother, dead. PR, overwhelming alliance. Just. Absolutely slaughtering them. The Rubik dies with the tier 4 towers. Man. That's probably game, man. All aboard Power Rangers hype train. Oh, we got a song to play when this one's over. Jesus, they're just making it look easy today. Cloud 9, Alliance, no skin off their back, and it's with stand-ins, too. I don't know who they've been using as stand-ins, but I don't remember both of these players. Maybe they're just using different names. Either way, Cheshire Cat gonna... Timber chain out while the chase comes in. Dick Aron farming Ake under the tier fours. Nice run around the Rosie. Might be able to pop this Aegis. Five dead. That was a triple, actually a quadruple dieback from Alliance. You just got wiped, then lost four again. It, it's time to GG. Whether you like it or not, they're going to. And Misery will call it. Alliance, only their second game here in the Summit 2. But they're 0 2. Yikes. And they are the way they're losing. In the trouble. And again, the disconnect pauses. 
Our throne will explode. Just a little icing on the cake there for the Power Rangers victory. Not much more to say than they just got played across the board. The Lions had a good level one gank on Timber. That's <laughs> yeah, again, it's just like, an, uh, imagine if they didn't have that, dude. Hey, negative, Woo! negative fantasy points. Oh, really? Yeah.